So in this video, we're going to be going over what are the six best long range rifles to use inside Warzone after the season three update. We did get an adjustment to sniper rifles and we got some slight adjustments to assault rifles such as the XM4 and the Vargo, as well as slight changes to the STG as well. But in this video, we'll be going over what are the best long range rifles as these are likely to be very popular now after the sniper nerf. If you do enjoy content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we try to reach our goal of 50k subscribers. Click that link in the description down below and subscribe to our second channel as well. But we do have the new addition of the Nikita AVT assault rifle. And I do want to mention straight away that I don't really think this gun is worth leveling up and unlocking. The recoil is a bit weird on this weapon overall. So what we do have now is a stats breakdown of the TTKs for every single assault rifle and LMG in the game as well. So like I said, we had an adjustment to the XM4 and its damage profile, the Vargo's recoil control, the Bren's damage profile and recoil, as well as the Whitley LMG. So some of these guns have gotten changed. The Whitley got a buff, the other ones got a bit of a nerf. Now, let's take a look at the assault rifles as these are the most popular. This is up to date with the sim.dg website, 300 HP, chest shot TTKs. Now, chest shot TTKs don't mean everything. I've had so many comments, but it still gives us a rough indication of what the TTK is like with that weapon. Now, we'll probably make a mix shot location TTK spreadsheet in the future, uh, but it's going to take a bit of time to get that done. So let's take a look at the chest shot TTKs here. So first of all, what we're going to do is mainly focus on the second damage range because any guns that have a third damage drop off are not really that powerful in my opinion. So we're mainly focusing on the second damage drop off point because that is a more consistent weapon. And now we're looking at some of the ARs here. Now, the AS44 we know has got too much recoil, even if you build it for recoil control. AS Val, again, too much recoil, but they do have the fastest TTKs. Farah is then the next quickest long range killing AR in the game, which is definitely a solid option. We've got the Scar, which has got a pretty small mag, so it's probably a reason why we can't use it at the moment. Amax is definitely up there now, definitely a solid AR. FFAR1, more of a kind of sniper support gun, which we'll make a video on in the future. Uh, C58 is definitely very solid in my opinion, probably my favourite AR right now. Uh, we've got the Odin, the Grav, we've got the Groza in there as well, we've got the Modern Warfare AK, the new assault rifle, which is what I do want to talk about here. So the TTK is actually pretty solid in my opinion, it's just that the recoil control, even once you fully max out the weapon, is still kind of difficult to control. Um, and it's still way more difficult than something like a Cold War AK or maybe an XM4 or something. So you're probably better off with those weapons as you'll be landing way more shots. Uh, so we've got the Cold War AK here as well. We've got the XM4 in here and we've got the Vargo Assault Rifle uh, down at the bottom as well. Now, even after the nerf to recoil on the Vargo, I tried it out yesterday with the full meta build and it still feels like it has no recoil at all. So the Vargo is still a solid option in my opinion. And we'll get onto the builds in just a moment. But let's take a look at the LA. LMGs as well. So moving on into the LMGs now, again, focusing on that sem second damage drop off point, we're looking at the fastest TTK LMGs in the game. You've got the Modern Warfare M91, which is a gun that I think is very solid inside Warzone. People don't really talk about this gun all that much. I've actually made a gameplay video on the channel if you do want to check that out with this LMG and it's very solid to use. Um, very consistent TTKs as well, as you can see here for close range and long range. Um, so overall, very solid LMG and the recoil control is very similar to something like an M4A1. So it's pretty much a no brainer in my opinion. I don't still see why people are not using this if they do like LMGs. Uh, now we've got the Bren in my opinion and the PKM, which is basically neck and neck. It's just going to come down to personal preference which one you like here. The other two LMGs that are in between have way too much recoil to constitute using them. Um, and then the Whitley is still not great. It's definitely got a way faster TTK than it had before, uh, especially at that longer range. But, um, and, and it has a bit better recoil control as well actually now, but it's still not solid enough to use. And now as you can see, the Bren is probably one of the slowest killing LMGs in the entire game. So there's gonna be pretty much no reason to use this LMG and they increase the recoil on it as well. So let's get into my six best long range ARs and I'll throw in two LMGs as well because people do enjoy using them. But we're mainly focusing on the ARs here because you do get solid movement. And to start off, we do have the M13. The M13 is a really solid gun to use right now. Headshot multiplier is really good. It's super accurate and pretty much can replace your sniper rifle at the moment because it's got pretty much zero recoil. Um, so you do want to use the mono suppressor, Tempest Marksman Barrel, uh, VOK Optic, 60 round mags, Commando Foregrip, very low recoil gun. If you land a couple of headshots, you're going to get a super fast TTK as well. At number five, we have the Cold War AK, which has pretty much always been a solid 
long range option to be honest it's just got a little bit more recoil than some of the weapons higher up on this list so that is why it's at number five but overall it doesn't matter where you land your shots with the cold war ak you're pretty much always guaranteed the same ttk so you know how long it's going to take you to kill an opponent which is what is really good about this cold war ak-47 so for the build you want to use the gru suppressor the spetsnaz rpk barrel axial free times optic uh, the bake like 60 rounds especially if you're playing caldera now uh, if you're on rebirth 45 could be a solid option as well and the spetsnaz grip at number four we have the vargo assault rifle now i tried this out yesterday i wanted to see what the recoil changes were but this gun still feels like super low recoil i'll probably do like a recoil comparison uh, for ars in the future but right now this gun still is super easy to use and it's got cold war movement so overall it's a very good ar um so gru suppressor task force barrel axial three times optic 60 round mags although i do feel like this gun needs a little bit larger mags now especially on caldera and the fact that if you're landing kind of limb shots and stuff you are going to get a slightly slower ttk but considering how accurate this gun is it's still a pretty solid option and then we've got the spetsnaz grip on there as well so overall this gun is very good to use and if you are landing your headshots and your upper chest shots for the most part you're going to get a very fast ttk as well next up we have a gun that i've seen a lot of yesterday that everyone was using which is the amax now after looking at the ttks and the spreadsheet earlier on we can understand why people are gravitating towards the amax the recoil is relatively easy to manage the TTK is definitely up there with the quickest uh, when it comes to long range TTKs. Uh, so overall, it's a very solid gun. Plus, it's a modern warfare weapon, which people love. So overall, the AMAX is just pretty much a no-brainer at the moment. So we've got the Mono Suppressor, Zodiac Barrel, VLK Optics, 45 round mags, Commando Foregrip. I wish the mags were a little bit bigger, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, 45 is still good enough, even on Caldera. So at number two, we have probably one of my favorite guns in the game right now, which is the Farah. Now the Farah is very solid and it's also very underrated at the moment. For some reason no one likes to use the Farah. I don't know why, just maybe because the Vargo is a little newer and it has a little bit better recoil control. But overall, the Farah has pretty much no recoil if you can manage it. Also, it's super fast in terms of TTK. It's the third fastest or fourth fastest killing uh, AR in the game for long range. So overall, it's going to melt people really quickly. Um, and the movement speed on the, the Farah is really good as well. So I do recommend this weapon. I don't know why not a lot of people are not using this uh, because it's pretty much one of the best ARs in the game right now. So GRU Suppressor uh, for the bullet velocity and the damage range. Spetsnaz RPK Barrel because it's going to give you the best recoil control. Axial free time, 60 round mags, Spetsnaz grip. We probably could do with a slightly bigger mag on this now, uh, similar to the Vargo, but overall, I do think the Farah should be pretty much one of the meta weapons right now. And last but not least, when it comes to the assault rifles, and probably the best AR in the game right now, in my opinion, is the C58. It's got the best balance between having a consistent TTK with a different shot location, similar to the Cold War AK. It's got a little bit less recoil than the Cold War AK, and it's easier to manage overall it's just a better gun and you get 55 round mag which is great for caldera as well so overall in my opinion the best ar in the game is the c58 you do want to use the agency suppressor uh, for the bullet velocity and the damage range task force barrel for the recoil control axial three times optic 55 round mags field agent grip we all know what the meta build is for the c58 and this is an absolutely solid weapon to use you can't really go wrong with this gun now let's get some of our honorable mentions in with the LMGs here. So if you do like LMGs, then the M91, in my opinion, is a solid LMG to use. You're getting a very consistent TTK because LMGs do a lot of damage, especially now that the Vanguard LMGs have been nerfed. I do think the Modern Warfare ones are better than the Cold War options as well. So the M91 overall is a solid weapon. The recoil is easy to manage on this gun as well. Uh, so you do want to use the Mono Suppressor. Uh, for the damage range, sound suppression, all that good stuff. Uh, the heavy barrel for the best recoil control. Tac laser, VLK optic, and the commando foregrip for the best recoil control. Uh, and the tac laser will give you a little bit faster ADS time. But overall, M91 is a solid LMG to use. You could check out the gameplay video at the end of this one. And finally, the last LMG is the Bruin. Now, in my opinion, the Bruin and the PKM are very similar. They've got very similar damage profiles, TTKs and everything. The only difference 
is the recoil pattern slightly different for both of these weapons. I just prefer the Bruin overall. I just think it's a little bit easier to manage in terms of recoil. But if you prefer the PKM, that's also going to fit in this slot perfectly fine. Uh, they both have very similar TTKs and the builds are very similar as well. So Mono Suppressor, Summit Battle for the best recoil control, Tac Laser, VLK Optic, Commando Foregrip. So... So there we have it. Those are the six best long range rifles inside Warzone at the moment after the season three update. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we try to reach our goal of 50k subscribers. Click that link in the description down below and subscribe to our second channel. And thank you very much for watching.